What is up, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of Best Ball Life. Happy Hour hosted by 4 for 4 Football. Uh, if you watch every week, you might notice that I'm not John Daigle. He is currently in the middle of nowhere holding up Scott Fishbowl drafts, making everybody wait. I'm TJ Hernandez, the director of 4 for 4 at the director of DFS at 4 for 4com with Ian Harditz over at PFF, uh, free Duke Johnson aficionado, and of course, Hayden Winks from underdog fantasy what's up boys i like how you introduce yourself technically though as daigle's twitter handle since he is still not jay daigle so i'm a little bit I think, <laughs> I think everyone's more confused than ever at this point but great day to be great as always tj yeah, man. uh yeah man let's uh let's fade to it together today yeah let's rock hayden what's up bud i'm also on team fade too i'm on fade all of the dolphins i don't think i have drafted a single one of them in our employees drafts so and we're down like through 40 i don't like the running backs i don't like gesicki i don't like waddle and tyreek together scares yep. me yeah. yeah it's like a team i'm probably not gonna have any of what how, how many like i mean how, how are you guys looking so far we're, we're doing best ball mania three draft today instead of the puppy um how do you uh no no nah. we, we you want to enter let's enter now yes all right one two three go 32nd draft as always uh hop on there as you guys have seen uh see here compared to what daigle usually runs i'm on dark mode so this should be the best draft you've seen all <laughs> see you want to continue to be host the rest of the time <laughs> <laughs> this is all i've needed to see like we're good um, before we before this draft fills, uh, everybody noticed that uh, message right there from four for four. We're giving away four twenty five dollar tickets today. So drop your username uh, in the chat below, and we'll randomly be picking those at the end of the draft today. And if you haven't signed up for Underdog yet, click on the link in the description. And if you deposit ten dollars into Underdog, you can get a free four for four subscription. So make sure you check that out as well. Um, what I was going to ask you guys, and it looks like we are going, we're, we're filled. I'm, I'm at two. Where are you at? Uh, where are you at, Ian? Third, right next to oh, each other. Geez, oh, it's going to get real Bro, crazy. I'm just happy I got a top three. I, I swear, I've done, I think, I, I just saw like 43 of these since the draft's been over. And yeah. God damn it, the amount of these that have been from like one nine or later is just absolutely killing me. I've ended up uh, with a lot of Kelsey, though, because of it, which maybe won't be a bad thing. That's nice. I'm 38 in, and I've actually lived at the turn. So um, it, it's obviously good. You get a lot of top three picks, but um, um, there's a lot of guys going in those that five to eight range that I, I don't have a lot of exposure to yet. But what I was going to ask you guys is, um, uh, you know, this deep into the season, what have you noticed in terms of uh, we started talking off air about, about the Dolphins, but what teams you've been really surprisingly heavy on or surprisingly light on? Do you have Too a good much. answer, Ian? I got too much Washington for my uh, like. Really? Oh no! Terry McLaurin, Jahan yeah. Dotson, even a little bit of Carson Wentz at the very end. Talk, talk to me guys. about talk to me about Jahan because I it makes it if you I have a lot of Terry, so it can make a lot of sense. Um, this is the easiest pick of all time right here. Um, CMC at two. I'm, I, I'm CMC is my one point oh one. Yeah, same. Yeah, yeah. I, I finally jumped back on. I, I jumped off. Uh, I jumped off in. May basically when they didn't do a single thing the entire offseason to upgrade quarterback yeah. they finally did so okay fair enough but yeah with the uh, Dotson specifically man he's just going like outside the top 60 usually yeah. I love the kind of guys he's grouped with he's the 16th overall pick and I just think that we have a tendency to overweight maybe what we thought before the draft and I understand he doesn't have maybe the best athletic profile ever but he's gonna be the number two option in an offense with you know, not the best quarterback, but none of these first rounders had a, that all that good of a quarterback. And again, for Washington to make him the 16th overall pick, I don't think he's quite as good as Jalen Waddle or anything, but it reminds me of Waddle last year when he was going like wide receiver 48 or later usually because I think people were just overthinking it. How, how do you think Washington plays that? Do you think they just run it? They, they actually ran like quite a bit of, of three wide last year. Do you think they run a lot of three wide and, and he's well, their slot okay. guy, number two out of the slot? Like, is I that what's happening? Be the, I think it'll be the slot, but Hayden, you curiously left out the second part of that quote in your uh, Dotson tweet. They said that they feel like he can play on the outside as well. I know this is always just kind of the talk we got to go through in July, so we'll know it, you know, really when they get out there. But yeah, man, you, you turn on his Penn State tape a little bit and like it really is shocking the amount of like just dope contested catches uh, that this guy can make i know he's i know he's under six foot but i don't think he's like one of these can only play in the slot restricted guys by any yep. stretch yeah i think he'll, i think he'll be in the slot in three wide receiver sets but i do think that he is good enough to be in two wide receiver sets and and the reality is he's facing curtis samuel for the two wide receiver set starting lineup and curtis samuel isn't like exactly yeah. this like theoretical outside receiver in his own right 
Um, so I like Dotson as well. I like Terry McLaurin. I have not been able to pull the trigger on Carson Wentz, and I'm avoiding Logan Thomas and the running back situation right there. So my disgusting teams are the Patriots, the Giants, and the Jaguars. Uh, they, I think there's some upside with those quarterbacks, and that's at the right pocket in all three of their number one wide receivers go in a range where I feel comfortable with. They're usually my second stack. I'll go with like a Raven stack. And then one of those three teams will be uh, my second stack. But I think there's some upside with Kadarius, Devontae Parker and Christian Kirk. Yeah. I like uh, out of those. I mean, I think Jacksonville is the one that I, I don't know if they'll be trendy, but I think now that people are starting to uh, people that aren't as hardcore as us are starting to write articles and people are starting to do their research and casuals are starting to, uh, you know, dive in a little bit. I, I think come mid August, I think Jags could be a, a trendy sleeper offense. Um, I mean, they they just have they they have a few pieces. Trevor Lawrence is still supposed to be like amazing, right? Like he's going to be all right. Etn's so. finally coming up too, and Evan Ingram I think has always just been a perfectly fine guy going like tight end twenty four, whatever it is. If you happen to need three tight ends out there, and you know one of the receivers should hit. So I guess we'll see. Uh, fuck me. <laughs> How have you guys been um, in, in general? And I'm not going to use this to snipe you or anything. In when you've been <laughs> drafting out of out of this uh, part of the draft, how have you been handling this? Th- like this is a interesting spot. I think starting CMC, you could really make obviously make a case for just straight up here running back. Um, but uh, there, there's also some some really interesting combos here too. So how have you been handling these um, starting at the front of the draft uh, first three rounds? Go ahead, Hayden, because I, I haven't had much experience doing it recently as I've been bickering about, and I'm taking Javante Williams ahead of ADP. Yeah, I think I think I like the superhero RB, and then I like T. Higgins and Mike yeah. Williams in particular here. Kind of just depends. But, yeah, I would have went with T. Higgins here. And then the, the running backs in the third round, I think, are very intriguing. I think James Conner has tons and tons of upside. Occasionally, you get Leonard Fournette to fall a little bit. Saquon, Javante, all are upside plays. To me, and then I even think Nick Chubb and Alvin Kamara have passed to top five um, ceilings as well. So I think this is a good spot to go one running back, one wide receiver. Yeah. Um, hey, I'm um, sorry, Ian, you went uh, Javante there. Um, I'll wait for you to make your next pick so you don't have to talk. But um, talk to after you make that next pick, talk to me a little bit about Javante. I like Chubb here actually a lot for the superhero, but with CMC at 101, I'm, I'm going to go with, with Pitts uh, just because I like the build of early tight end. I'm going with Tyreek here because he's now a good five spots past ADP. Still Tyreek Hill. I feel like he doesn't get, you know, this whole summer fill of like the Debo Samuel role. Like Tyreek, it makes the most sense out of absolutely everyone because he actually has played running back and he's got the freaking coach that was helping uh, design it. So I know he's not the same size. He's probably not going to be running between the tackles. But, you know, like show me the average yards per carry between the tackles versus on the outside. Like Mm -hmm. I'm willing to bet that it's probably not the smartest thing to run into the teeth of the defense uh, in the first place. So with Tyreek, just again, getting in the third round, like, okay, I'll, I'll go there. And the reason why I did take Javante was I uh, usually picking at the back half of the third, I've been getting a lot of uh, James Conner, Travis Etienne, uh, Cam Akers usually still there in the fourth. And I've been happy with that. But with these wide receivers here, uh, with T Higgins guy in particular, is like between Tyree, Keenan, Mike Williams, even Michael Pittman in there, I felt like I was going to get one of those guys coming back to me. Went ahead and took Javante, who – Hey, he doesn't even need the entire backfield from Melvin, mm-hmm. but if he can get 60, 70% instead of 55%, which I think is reasonable enough after they took so long to re-sign uh, Melvin in the first place. I mean, I, I think Javante's floor is just fine. It's, it's just this really decisive, the divisive topic of the fantasy offseason, probably just because we spend too much damn time talking about all this. But, I mean, Javante's floor is probably going to be an upside RB2. That, that's great. Yeah, and do we really in this like format? Do we really care about his floor? I mean, a lot of times you're getting him. We you took him at the end of the second, but you could get him at the third sometimes. And his, it, if the backfield plays out in a way where one of the running backs wins out and dominates down the stretch, it's going to be Javante, right? So the we're playing a tournament where you want to get stronger as the season goes on, and if they end up exploding and a running back ends up going nuclear, it's going to be him. He has like one of the craziest cult followings on Twitter too. So if there's any training camp speculation, his ADP is like <laughs> yeah, yeah. down to climb the fastest. Like <laughs> there could be positive reports about Melvin Gordon and his ADP is not going to change. You cannot say the same thing about uh, old Javante. 
Yeah, Hayden. Uh, dra- we're, since we're both drafting at the turn, we'll stay stick with a little um, turn talk here. When, when you are, let's say we get into the the fifth, sixth round. The the one spot I have been willing to make reaches is that quarterback when I'm on the terms for roster construction uh, considerations. Is there anything different you're doing when you're drafting at either of the turns? Well, the four or five turn, like in this build in particular, I think. Lamar, Rashad Bateman, just going mm-hmm. four or five right there makes a ton of sense. You're capturing yeah. all the upside in that passing offense. And we haven't gotten any positive reports from Dobbins and Gus Edwards. I threw it out on Twitter. Like, what if this is the same season that happened last year, but Lamar Jackson's healthy and Rashad Bateman is just better than Marquise Brown? You can see like a completely legendary season. I'm not banking on uh, the running backs being fully healthy. The offensive line looks improved. So I want to be really overweight on Lamar Jackson because he has that potential 35 point ceiling when we need it most. Um, yep. Kyler Murray, you can make a similar argue like for the, more like fifth, sixth turn. I'm not really big on Marquise Brown, but I like going Kyler with DeAndre and kind of working yourself into the other wide receivers that can give you some points in the middle. But I'm with you. I want I want one of the top, I would say, ten ish uh, quarterbacks. Last year, yeah. uh, the top 26 teams in regular season scoring, all of them had a quarterback before round 10 i think that's unlocking the upside and that's just kind of the trend of the nfl right now yeah all, actually hold on real quick up. you yeah, can yeah. also get uh trey lance and brad and Ayuk basically on the same turn when you're going around which mm-hmm. if debo's gonna keep playing a little bit of running back i mean Ayuk's like I, I don't know that he has this well if debo gets hurt then he does have like this wide receiver one boom in him but he could be um you know a borderline wide receiver too. Some of those uh, stats, people are doing a bit of disservice uh, with Ayuk. You know, taking the out of the dog ho- out of the doghouse splits, and like he has two more games played than some of the guys he's being compared to. But we still know he's a great player, and just like last year when Ayuk probably shouldn't have been ahead of Debo. I'm not saying Ayuk should be ahead of Debo again. Obviously, he shouldn't, but we could argue that disparity is a little bit too wide based on the second half usage in that offense. Yeah, and and we just kind of mentioned uh, this turn, and, and this is where I take some of these early round quarterbacks. I, I try not to reach for, especially the early round guys, because you're already spending so much draft capital on them. But uh, Ian, how have you been handling getting exposure to these uh, quarterbacks, say, going before the fifth round or, or at the four or five turn? Like, are, are you taking them at cost? Are you looking for them to slide? Or you just want them as much as possible because they offer the most upside? Kyler Murray, my highest drafted quarterback at yeah. this point, continue to be happy to take him. Uh, Lamar's been good as well. I, I was getting a lot of Mark Andrews later in the second for a while. Mm-hmm. So then I, I I heard what you said earlier about kind of being willing to reach a little bit to uh, complete the stack with the quarterback. Yeah. I am there for that. And also just still trying to get all my Trey Lance exposure now because I think he's naturally going to rise up to QB7. He's already on the way up there. There's just not a big enough difference between uh, him and Jalen Hurts, I think, to put you know the pocket, the, the, the elderly pocket types uh, ahead of Lance for that much longer. I mean, it's not even like don't even bring Jimmy Garoppolo into the argument look at nick mullins averaging like 8.2 yards per attempt before debo and Ayuk even got there in 2018 like lance doesn't he'll he'll be fine he's gonna put up bonkers numbers because of the way he plays so uh, i went with uh hayden's call there with jackson and bateman and i actually don't have a lamar share yet this this up to this point i've kind of been letting the early round quarterbacks fall to me and this is kind of the point of the season where i'm going to start hitting them because i do like i think my my, my target exposure on let's call the, the first five quarterbacks off the board. I want them on like 30% of my teams, but uh, let's talk about what uh, Ian just did because Terry McLaurin is a guy that we were talking about before we jumped on. And then Patrick Mahomes is interesting because he's actually been sliding lately. So Ian, yeah. Yeah. So Ian talk about uh, Terry, who I think we, we both love for a lot of reasons. And then why is Mahomes sliding and how much are you taking advantage of that? Terry, my highest owned wide receiver. I have him wide receiver 15 now. He's even been a little bit higher than that throughout the offseason. So, you know, haven't had to draft him that high almost ever. So if he's going to slide down to this muddled wide receiver two range where everyone has at least one red flag or two, happy to scoop him up there. Maybe get the dots and Wentz completion later, boys, speaking oh, it into God. existence. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, had to get the, uh, you know, just throwback Mahomes Tyreek stack to send some good vibes. But no, I mean, I, I was just surprised to see uh i was almost ready to take kyler and i was like oh shit mahomes is actually still available here so um i've been able to do mahomes kelsey a few times yeah. and you know didn't have that there but man 
it's never been easier to cheaply stack Mahomes. And the fact that everyone's on this, the fact people like go out of their way to draft Juju Smith Schuster still just absolutely slays me. But it's great because now I can get MBS and uh, Sky Moore, like the actually good wide receivers in the year 2022 in this offense rounds later. Yeah, Did Hayden. You, oh, go ahead. Do you, do you know why Mahomes, or what's changed the last month and why is Mahomes dropped basically a round and a half? I think just like strictly for off of game theory reasons, like if some people were drafting Mahomes at the round three, four turn, I can, you can start getting him in the round five and you can still stack him up with Juju MVS or whoever later. Like to me, it's like a, a huge no brainer at this point. It feels like over the past couple of weeks, <clears throat> at least in our little bubble, it feels like Lamar and the Ravens are getting a lot of steam. So I think that might have a little bit to do with it. Um, and then, I mean, Herbert's just not moving at all. People love the Chargers right now. But what I wanted to ask you, Hayden, was going back to the Chiefs, Mahomes has been sliding. One of the biggest risers in ADP over the last week, the fifth bi biggest riser is Marcus Valdez scantling which is very interesting. So how are you navigating? If if you're, um, let's just talk about the wide receivers. Let's assume Kelsey's just going to go bonkers and, and we like Mahomes and we like ch uh, stacking the Chiefs cheaply. How are you navigating their wide receivers right now? Yeah, I was huge on MVS, um, still am. To me, his role is so secure because he, is the only one that can go downfield and that's where we're chasing in best ball in particular there's also some range of outcomes where mvs was kind of held back because he had Devonte adams what happens if travis kelsey goes down like I, I can't rule out that mvs can't be an eight target per game guy i'm not banking on that happening but i think that there is some upside there and i think the, the whole point of this is mahomes like previously you'd have to drive his uh, draft his pass catchers and then hope Mahomes falls to you. Now you can draft Mahomes at a reasonable price and then you can pick which wide receivers you actually want to stack him with. If Ian doesn't like Juju, I hear that. Go draft MVS. There's some people that think MVS is terrible. Okay, you draft uh, Sky Moore. The good news is they're all so damn cheap. I think you can go Juju, MVS, and Sky Moore if you wanted to and just kind of ping pong those weeks as well. So I think, I mean, I'm not going to be fading Mahomes in my entire life. I'll probably be retired from fantasy <laughs> before I'm fading Patrick Mahomes. So yeah. Uh, Ian, uh, Hayden just talked about being able to afford uh, multiple guys from the Chiefs offense. And there's a few teams that you can like really heavily stack pretty easily. Like the Bears have been one of my favorite to do it. But how have you been navigating these um, mega? Did I just get sniped? God damn it. Um, uh, that sounds so gross. Um, how have you been navigating like these these mega um, team stacks? Are you doing that a lot, or have you been um, have you been more on the uh, draft smaller stacks on, on your teams. I just only look at week 17. Uh, no, absolutely <laughs> not. Uh, with, uh, you know, I've, I probably don't go more than two players on um, sometimes mm -hmm. three, if it's like a cheap tight end throwaway, uh, type of option. So I I'd say three is usually my max. Um, I've, I, I, I had one early where I got the, I got the Keenan Mike and then Justin Herbert. That was a fun one, but, uh, yeah, uh, go ahead, TJ. I'm just about to do something gross here. I'm going to pair Lamar and JK just because I'm just going to value hunt on this pick and just hope I get all of their touchdowns for the season. Like that's not something I'm ever really doing, but now I have the whole Ravens offense. So now I got Ooh. Rashad, JK and Lamar. So I need them to hit now. I am terrified of not taking MVS here, but I think, uh, yeah. Oh roll the God. dice, roll the dice, roll the dice, baby. Cause somebody else, I mean, somebody else was, has this exact same, team but yeah. they drafted mvs at 108th overall where he was going a couple weeks ago so like okay to me like i i think you have to be willing to burn bbm3 entries yeah. for the sake of chasing that high upside uh team and i like i it hates to like i hate to like go through this draft and you're like damn i just missed my stacks but you really do have to be willing to burn some teams and hope that you get like the actual oh yeah, best stack yeah. possible if yeah. it had been same tier i would have gone for it but it, it it was just too much yeah, if you're trying to draft every team like it's gonna gonna win your home league, you're you have you're just killing yeah. your chances at, at winning um at winning uh the two million dollars. So um I wanna take a look at uh TJ, you're in on AJ Dillon though, because I sniped yeah, you on I'm, that. I mean ooh. I mean, I just think, th so the way I've been thinking about the Packers is like everybody's talking about who's gonna be the Devontae replacement. I look at it as like who are their two best players? Uh, besides Aaron Rodgers, it's Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon, right? So how how about they both just get 250 touches? 
And if something happens to either of them, they're going to go freaking nuclear because we've seen the Packers be willing to put the whole offense on their shoulders. And that's the difference between them and like Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt, who for now have to de deal with Dearness Johnson, making it into probably another committee. But honestly, you could argue that's more so for Chubb. Kareem Hunt's been someone I've been happily getting as he continues to fall because otherwise he's still going to be someone that's going to be pushing borderline low end RB two status, even if nothing changes, but if something happens to Chubb, I mean, Dearness takes Chubb off the field on pass downs. Kareem hunt is their obviously yeah. best pass down back. So Kareem, it's been so weird. Every time Chubb gets hurt, Kareem gets hurt like immediately after it's been bad luck, but man, make no mistake about it. Like that's still one of the best running backs in the NFL. And if he gets traded to one of these, just, you know, dream scenarios, then his ADP is only gonna go up. He's like RB 30, 31 right now. Hayden, who's your favorite uh, RB1 on a zero RB team or RB2 on a hero RB team? Um, Like, if, if I can get Elijah Mitchell, if we're still calling that zero RB, like, to me, Yeah, I think that's is, your RB. Yeah, I think it's, like, round six is kind of where you can start. Yeah. I like going there. I don't like waiting too long Cox on the zero sucker, RB. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Mr. Sucker is my second You almost You RB. almost got a spit take on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Elijah Mitchell to me is just has the runway for like uh, 1,200 rushing yards and, and 12 rushing touchdowns this year. And this is half PPR. And I'm willing to roll the dice. Kareem Hunt, Tony Pollard, AJ Dillon, they require an injury. Uh, to me, like Melvin Gordon's kind of best of both worlds, where I think that he's at least going to be averaging, I would say, like eight uh, fantasy points, which is not going to help you out very much. But he's one injury away from, I think, being like a consensus top 10 running back. Yeah, Melvin Gordon is actually like, th this is where you need to think about player archetypes right like if you have a true zero rb team he makes a ton of sense yes. as a player because he's going to get work to start the season if you are drafting if i'm drafting him as my rb3 i actually might like him a little less i might go for more of an upside guy there yeah i still like that's why i don't like robust because i want to keep the flex open like even if i went to running backs i'm i'm fine with melvin gordon being my third because he would just go into my flex like an, at the positive like the at a ceiling outcome and that's like the reason why i don't like robust is if your three running backs are cooking and then you draft your fourth one and he's also cooking, he's not really helping out your team. So let me ask you guys this. Let, let me make, let us make these two picks real quick. And then I'm going to come back to an idea. Um, I just stacked Olave with Devonte Smith for that week 17. And I think Olave is the best rookie. Um, I'm going to go Claypool just to, I might as well round out this Baltimore Pittsburgh it's week 17, right? I like it. Um, I'm going Michael Thomas because Nick Underhill is feeling, hearing optimistic things about him. And I trust Nick Underhill, and this is a pretty good time to uh, still get Michael Thomas at pick 99. I mean, he's going to be right up. I think if there's no injury concern, like Michael Thomas would probably be like a, you know, he'd be like there in like the Allen Robinson range, I think, and like the low end wide receiver two, borderline wide receiver two. And you could even argue at that point, based on the potential targets, uh, that he's too cheap. Thomas and Chris Olave at this point, man. Olave might have actually gone before. Uh, yeah, he did. I, I took him. I took him. I, okay. I took him at. Uh... I I don't blame you. I, dude, I, you know, and coming from Ohio State Homer, sometimes I look at this shit and I'm like, take it easy. And, but Terry McLaurin and Chris Olave, two of my highest uh, own wide receivers so far. And while I do think Thomas, as he's slotting, is a good value, like there is a chance, even if he just plays, that Olave just ends up uh, taking over the offense. So, so much uh, Olave is down there with Dotson, too. Like, it's when you have these highly, highly drafted rookies that you know are at least going to be a top two guy in their offense, like I'm fine rolling a dice in wide receiver four plus range. Yeah, d yeah, and that's the difference. Like so many of these picks, people talk about if you like a pick or if you don't, and it's just like we were talking about with Melvin Gordon. If you're taking them as your wide receiver four, it's a lot different than if you're taking them as your wide receiver two, right? So those things come into play um, a ton. Hayden mentioned robust running back, and something I want to ask you guys about, and something I just don't hear being talked about a lot is there's a million dollars going to the highest regular season score. Kind of what I've heard people talk about: how do you optimize for that? Well, run pure. But like robust running back kind of plays into a regular season high upside, right? If your top three running backs hit while all of these teams are building to optimize for week 17 to build as the season gets stronger, that's kind of a strategy to, to optimize for the regular season. No, I actually literally wrote a column on this today on the underdog network. And I think the most likely outcome is going to be a superhero to two running backs to start. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe you can get into your Elijah Mitchell, uh, like AJ Dillon range as like your third uh, RB, which is, I don't right. know if we're calling that robust or whatever. It's kind of in between. I think that's, totally I think viable. that's still kind of superhero, superhero yeah. adjacent. 
Yeah, it's all, it's think, all modified zero RB, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's still all zero RB to me. Um, yeah, I, I think basically it's a balanced approach. Like we don't mm -hmm. like we kind of like mock people that say like, oh, draft a balanced team. But the reality is you have to hit every single one of those first 10 round picks basically to win yeah. this tournament. I think uh, 85 percent of these teams that finished in the top uh, or that scored over 2000 points had Cooper Cup and Jonathan Taylor. And obviously they built around the structures. Uh, in different ways but for yeah, the most part yeah. it was like five five wide receivers by round 10 they had one or two running backs in the first couple rounds and then one tight end and sometimes two quarterbacks but to me you got to you got to go with the balanced approach i think that i would squeeze in two two running backs early and then i think you can filter in roll the dice on uh tony pollard and melvin gordon and hope mm, that like you that. get an yep. injury uh to kind of lead you the way Ian, you're There's doing you're doing anything to optimize for that uh that regular season million dollars uh, to be honest, no, this is the first time hearing about it, but it excites me uh, a lot. <laughs> yes. So 10% of the player pool, yes. 10% 10, 10 of the prize pool is going to it. And like the question I wrote about in my column was, are 10% of the teams that enter this optimizing strictly for the, that prize pool? And if the answer to that is no, there could be a little edge of just going all out for it. The, obviously there's only one person that's going to win this thing. So it makes it tricky. Um, this is my yeah. favorite combo when I go early, early, early quarterback with Justin Fields is just like my favorite combo right now. That's a fun one. Uh, r r real quick on Tony Pollard. I agree. And I almost had the same, like TJ, you were saying before, and I had the same thought when I was kind of ranking the Packers running backs, like who are the best players in their offense? Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon mm -hmm. and Pollard. I know he didn't get that treatment last year, but at this point he could easily be three. Even if Ezekiel, even if the Cowboys wrongly still are like Ezekiel, Elliott, we need to get you the ball. And I'm not trying to slander Zeke here even, but we don't have Cooper. We're not going to have Gallup for a bit. Like this could be the pipe dream of Pollard, like playing like 60% snaps, 20% at wide receiver and like 40% in the backfield. Like if anyone can do it, it might be him, man. Yeah. I just want to say two things. I just tilted really hard. Um, realizing Sal, our producer is also in this draft. He sniped me on Ramondre and it <laughs> tilted me into taking a second tight end with the same bye week as my early round tight end. So we're off the rails officially. <laughs> this range I, sucks. I will say like to me, I'm just like going straight to Alexander Madison and Rashad white and Tim Isaiah Patrick. Spiller and yeah, maybe a little Tim Patrick. These this wide receiver range to me is brutal. Like to yeah. me, I think Devontae Parker should be ranked above all these guys. Um, I'm fine with Tim Patrick, like you said, but man, this wide receiver tier is brutal. Yeah, the only one that is is kind of interesting to me that well, one I've been I've had I have quite a bit of boy just because I've I've like seen Burrow fall and like if you get Burrow unstacked, he's the only guy left. Uh, Boyd, unless you're going Hayden Hurst super late, and then how do you guys feel about? Michael Gallup, because like I mean, he he could he might not start the season right, but he could come back and have a pretty nice role if if the offense is is decent. I mean, they they were good last year, but how do you guys feel about Gallup? He's all uh, if he goes down, just again, I'm taking Jahan Dotson in this range over Jamison over Gallup because I mm -hmm. just like his um you know overall profile and just being healthy right now is huge. But if he goes a little bit further, man, then I would be down um, for sure because I mean everything I just said about Pollard, you know that offense is wide open for Gallup. It's why we love CD so much. But man, what was it? Fifty million for Gallup? Pretty similar thing to a Goblin. I wouldn't say the Cowboys are as much of a like, you know, playoff lock as the Buccaneers or anything, but because Gallup has the money, because the organization has already committed that and stuff like they don't need to necessarily rush him along, but it's also telling you like he's about to get force fed at least, you know, one B for the first time in a couple years. And uh, yeah. yeah, good player. Why not? Hey, Hayden, if, if you're not loving wide receivers right here, if you're say you have, let's say you got two quarterbacks out of the way, one tight end. Um, what do you, what do you kind of look at? We got tight ends and running backs. Is there anyone that stands out to you in this range? Uh, to me, this is just, this is the, the insurance running back types, yep. you know, it's 100%. just, it's just, there's, there's a bunch of them. I think Daryl Henderson qualifies to some extent as well. H Henderson but... over Madison. Why? Why? <laughs> because there's a new coaching staff in Minnesota. Madison wasn't good last year, even though he wasn't fantasy. And uh, what if, we, we saw Amir Abdullah beat out Madison before for pass down work. You know, what, what if K Kane keeps freaking looking like a monster with the ball in his hand? Kane is not being at the goal line, though. I'm, I'm just chasing these touchdowns. Uh, does do, know. We, we know Madison has no standalone alone value. Henderson does, could. does Henderson? Okay, that's what, that's what yeah. That, that's, that argument makes the most sense to me. Yeah. So that's all. And I, I had a lot of Madison earlier in the uh, 
off season. Matthew uh, Collier, shout out one of the better Vikings beat reporters, if not the best out there. Um, he kind of put that thought in my head originally when I was asking him, he's the one that tipped me off first and it wasn't really a tip off. He's just good at his job. So he knew the answer to this, but uh, like the Dalvin cook trial, just it's going to be too far in the distance to really impact the season. Mm-hmm. And then, cause I was really high on Madison when that was still a risk. And he was like, well, just not positive that Madison is actually going to be as featured. If something happens to uh, Dalvin cook again, and to TJ's point, if nothing happens to Dalvin cook, you're getting nothing all freaking season. Yeah. Uh, as far as, since we're on the subject right now, one guy that, I have almost no shares of just because I don't have a a take really. And that's probably a leak in my game is Cam Akers. Who's playing ahead of Daryl Henderson. How do you guys feel about that backfield in general? Speaking of Daryl Henderson, so serendipitous. Aiden's with me. We're on acres, right? Yeah. uh, The athletics, Jordan Rodriguez said that the the team's planning that acres is going to be the guy and they specifically want to use him on passing downs. Now she also wrote like that is like what they're hoping happens. And acres has to prove that he's healthy and that's, it seems like we're trending in the right direction, but I don't, I'm not sure if we'll actually know that until we actually go see him. The good news is the Rams play their their training camp at UCI, and I live at UCI, so I'm going to be going over to the practice field. You'll get every detailed snap you can possibly imagine between Henderson and Akers this offseason. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Boots on the ground. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> nice, nice plug there. So that's what we're here for. Um, this is kind of gross right here. I'm just going to go with uh, – I just like having bills on my team, so I'm taking Crowder. Man, just take. I was, I was, I was gonna, I was gonna double tap Henderson. I well, I have a ton of McKenzie. I was gonna double tap Henderson Carter there because I'm weak at running back, but the running backs after that, I'm kind of met on. Like That's usually, fair. I usually I would take Gus or Khalil there, but uh, I already have um, all of the the uh, Ravens, and I have um, Fields and commit already so hey, love that. I, I see mr scampers yelling at us daryl henderson was a like rb1 last season before he got hurt like his expected usage was even better he does have if there is an injury to acres or he's not there i mean like i guess my point is i want henderson over some of these handcuffed running backs like rashad white and alexander madison who just aren't going to play without an injury there's a chance yeah. henderson does our most recent sample of the super bowl was the closest thing to a committee we've seen, Sean McVay. I think he's a smart person. Like, that's the thing with Akers. He could get the girly role, and he's going now. I, I mean, I got him RB20 in Scott Fishbowl. Like, it's mm-hmm. he's just being pushed down so far. If he's going past, like, Zeke and Brees Hall, and you he, he need a running back in round four or five, like, I think Graham Barfield said, too, like, you could argue that just based on the potential volume for this dude, uh, it's he, you could say he's being drafted even closer to his floor. Shout out to um, Scott Fishbowl. Scott Fishbowl is the biggest charity tournament in the world. It combines analysts, experts, and fans. And now Underdog has a little Scott Fishbowl action on there. Hayden, what do we got going on over there? Yeah, we have a charity tournament. Um, you can earn your way into Scott Fishbowl 13 if you were unable to participate this year. I believe it's a $5 entry. All the mm-hmm. money's going to the J.J. Watt uh, Foundation um yeah we've partnered up with scott fishbowl because like you said it's like the coolest thing the fantasy football community as a whole brings to the table so if you want to uh, i think it's open all the way through kickoff so if you want to spend five dollars as like a practice before a a bbm3 or before your home league and you want it to go to good use um we have that in the lobby right now yeah it's beautiful it's right up right up at top along if you're if you're looking for the puppy or the bbm3 uh there's sfb satellite right up there um, Scott's done amazing stuff for the community. Um, in, in addition to uh, charities like the JJ Watt Foundation, every year uh, a, a bunch of money goes to Toys for Tots across the country. He has uh, he has people in a bunch of cities buying Toys for Tots, going to their local stores. So uh, shout out to Scott Fish. Shout out to Scott Fish Bowl. My team is fucking sick in Scott Fish Bowl, guys. Kyler, <laughs> Trey Lance. Akers, James Conner, Lenny Fournette, Jamar Chase, and round eight, Amon Ross St. Brown. Also Damn. already got also already got Zach Ertz in there too. Like I'm you know, I'm not trying to hate any of my league mates here, but keep drafting the way you guys are drafting. <laughs> so this actually brings up a, a really good real life point. So uh, we've been in in the depths of drafts and the depths of best ball since before the NFL draft. Whereas the majority of sane people don't start drafting until August. Right? So if you're somebody that, uh, let's say this is your first year heavily into best ball, how do you like adjust your brain to go back to not even just Scott fishbowl, but another league? Like, are you, 
let's let's just assume underdog ADP is by far the sharpest. Are you like adjusting to say you have an ESPN platform? Are you still just like letting all these values fall, or are you just like importing underdog ADP and just like scooping up guys as they go? Like, what would you tell the casual drafter just kind of getting into these things? Man, for me, like to me, I think everyone's going to be anchored to whatever uh, ADP or ranking is being displayed displayed in every lobby, whether that's Yahoo, ESPN, or whatever. And I would just know the actual rankings, and then just yep. like know. Hey, like if Rashad uh, Bateman is a ninth round pick, I'm just gonna wait until the eighth round to draft. You don't oh, have to draft him in the fifth round like we have to. On I thought, how how do you take Jamal Williams there? Chicago, uh, dude, week seventeen, Jamal baby. I love Jamal Williams too. Gosh. I thought he was gonna be there too. Justin Fields, Cole Komet with the Jamal bring back. <laughs> of course. Um, uh, Ian, how how would you tell like like the like someone that's deep in best ball to like adjust their brain, so to speak, for um for their regular drafts yeah yeah you know forget week 17 exists <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah that's definitely definitely a big part of it uh i would just it's more i think that like just load up on running backs and wide receivers you only need one mm. quarterback you really only need one tight end if you're doing an early draft at all i mean just don't even draft a defense or kicker get like if you have five handcuffed running backs on your team great you'll probably need to cut them sooner rather than later right. but hopefully you know it's you gotta do what you gotta do out there and just the more freaking uh shots in the hole you can have like i remember when um levy bell decided to hold out the whole year and like the people that got james connor at the end of their drafts just for absolutely nothing uh were just um obviously uh, winning all their leagues and like there's always a couple guys i think jamal williams is one of them this year who like in chuba uh Ch not chuba um mike davis arguably was two years ago I'm doing a handcuff in index article next week, so I can tell you guys all this, uh, who, who this year's version is going to be. But I just think there's a couple situations like that every single year that we just aren't on top of as much as we should be. Madison and Pollard, like A.J. Dillon, these – we can talk about their sand loan value, but they're yeah. all going super high. But um, in my opinion, the three kind of cheapest handcuffs we keep seeing are Jamal Williams, Deontay Foreman now in Carolina, and Hassan mm -hmm. Haskins, Hayden's guy over there. And I'm uh, all about that. Dog. Dog. Um, let, let me ask you guys this. Th so two things that are, I think are, are really big adjustment. One, over the last two years, we've seen the quarterback land la landscape completely change. Like quarterback scoring hasn't been linear the last two years. The top eight or nine guys uh, ha have kind of blown away the field and ADP super sharp. Like there's only two or three top 12 running backs that aren't drafted as the top 12 the last couple of years. And with those top guys scoring so much, and, and then in something like best ball where because everyone's drafting two, they're getting shifted up. In, a, in your typical 16-round, 12-team league, how are you handling the quarterback position? Man, I'm conflicted because I think that trend's kind of here to stay. I think mm -hmm. that, like you said, we can project that position so well because we care about the fans or the quarterbacks so much. And I think that offenses, we're seeing like a polarity in how mm -hmm. offenses, uh, schemes are kind of structured, how fast you're playing, how much you're passing. I feel like that discrepancy is wider than it's ever been before so really it's like how does a team that's like 18th in pass rate 18th in pace going to com ever compete with josh allen i don't care how good right. the quarterback is it's like right. so hard to do it so i think the late round quarterback i'm not saying it's completely dead and i think it's less dead in your home league but i think that if you think that you're smarter than your home league might as well just take like a these kyler murray and then know that you're going to be able to and just pick, crush everywhere else you're going to be able to pick the better uh, handcuff running backs and mm -hmm. the better breakout wide receivers in your league mates in the first place. So might as well just uh, take one of the high quarterback guys. I know that's not the consensus, um, but I think the NFL has kind of changed the last like three years. Ian, how are you handling quarterback in home leagues? I think I think Hayden nailed it. If you do fall to the Rogers Stafford tier, get Justin Fields. He's clearly this year's dual threat, late, late round guy. Again, Trey Lance is already, I feel like Trey Lance is a guy that people that aren't paying attention will be like, oh, that's my late round quarterback this year. And it was kind of a similar thing with Jalen Hurts, who ended up kind of actually being a late round quarterback, but for portions of the summer, he was going yeah. like top eight. So uh, I just think that Justin Fields, like he, his last four starts, he had four top 12 finishes. He got hurt. And I get it. The offense sucks this year. The offense sucked last year. Like if he is going to run, more with a better scheme like he doesn't even need to run more if he does what he did during the last stretch of stars we saw last year he's gonna be the classic like first two years of his career josh allen probably on an even worse team than that but you know not a great real life quarterback yet but a very good one in fantasy yeah absolutely i mean i, I think um yeah like 
like Hayden said, I don't think late round quarterback is dead. Um, but it, it's it's really hard to justify. There's just so few guys that can that can really. And here's here's my biggest pet peeve in fantasy right now is people saying like he can be a a QB one. It's like that that doesn't that doesn't matter anymore. Like a a top twelve QB doesn't matter. You need like a a top six QB now, or you're just yeah. you're chasing your tail all year. So that um th- that oh here we go. Take a uh, I go, I go. KJ Hamler, Jarek McKinnon for the super cheap week seventeen stack there. Julio, um, <laughs> it's I was so at, Julio season. I, was, I can't wait for him to yeah. sign for the Packers, man. I can't wait. I'm gonna. I was thinking your about great, Ian. <laughs> this this portion of the draft for me has usually been like an, an unsigned wide receiver. Yeah, man. Dude, it's Julio over Will Fuller and Odell Beckham. It's not even Absolutely. close to me, man. Julio Jones was able to play last year. Go watch him, please. Like the first four weeks before he had hamstring concerns, like. That dude still looks really big and really explosive. I mean, what about this? Rams just re-signed Odell. He has all the time in the world to come back and just balls the last last month of the season. How about that? Bro, and Maybe. also, Julio can go anywhere. If he goes to Baltimore, he's going with the he's going higher than like 75th or 80th. Chargers. Cowboys. No, I'm but I'm saying like the worst case scenario is probably Baltimore. That's where and that's not even that terrible. Like he's gonna be the number two receiver there. And Hayden, to your point, okay, what Hayden, if Maybe they maybe they do keep passing a little bit more. I'm just saying, like, even moving aside the freaking great matches where he's all of a sudden in the wide receiver four conversation, like he's gonna be going a hell of a lot higher than round seventeen. So I'm the biggest fish when it comes to contract stuff. So let's just assume uh, this is possible. But let's just say, like, I, I don't know, a team that we didn't think is going that isn't a contender, and for some reason, like nobody's on Julio if he signs with like the Texans or something. Like, what 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 is what is his value? Higher than now. Yeah, definitely higher than now. Here, the thing, the funniest thing about the like uh, Julio's injury prone guys is he's going behind like Curtis Samuel and Will Fuller, and, like <laughs> yeah, also yeah, 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 injury prone yeah. guys that just aren't good. Um, yeah, so like to me, like I, I don't see a reason why Julio Jones can't surpass like Jarvis Landry. Tampa, you know? Tampa. Who's Dude, their, he's going to the Packers, man? Who's I'm, their third receiver while Goblin's out? They hate Tyler Johnson. Cameron Brait, baby. Scott, I think, I think Scotty Miller's fine. Scotty, Scotty Miller, Scotty yeah, Miller, I guess. I guess he, um, is he Cyril, Grace, Cyril Grayson. Grayson. Brashad Perryman, <laughs> like, is Brashad Perryman even going to make the team? Brashad Perryman's good. We're, we're, Can they cut him? What's his a, money like? Can they cut this, him? This is oh, a Brashad Perryman slam veteran free minimum stream. Um, so I, I, as I mentioned, um, when Sal tilted me with that Ramondre pick, I, I just, uh, blind stacked fields with, um, with Komet. So for anybody watching that's wondering about roster construction, 99.9% of the time, this team with Kyle Pitts is a, a two tight end team, but I, I backed myself in a corner and have to take a third tight end here. So if you're wondering about that, that's what happened there. Is there even a third tight end we want though? Or do oh, we Oh yeah, just, there's, there's, I mean, there, there's, there's one. There's one that was that was top ten in, in, in yards per route run and and, and should have been uh, the number one tight end on his team last year, but uh, didn't work oh, out. Oh god, <laughs> oh gosh, I see where I see where this one's going. I actually don't hate hate that call. I, that would be the name on this list. I mean, I'm seeing some names that are just disgusting me. Yeah, but uh, like that guy. One. That guy's Johnny Smith. Yeah, they're they're not. They got rid of their fullback. Johnny Smith's actually going to play this year. Uh, like he's still going to be the tight end too, but like there's yeah, a chance, he's got contingency upside. We we thought they were gonna be like a a a the the Gronk Aaron Hernan uh, Aaron Hernandez combo, and then they weren't last year, right? So like there's a there's a chance maybe that uh, that comes to fruition this year with a pretty um, mediocre wide hey, receiver core. Shout, shout out to Mad Sox. Uh, Greg Almond said the same thing. I'm not sure if that's why he's saying it, but Kyle Rudolph to Buccaneers is the rumor uh, right now. Buccaneers, I think all the reports we heard was that they expected Gronk to that they thought he was going to come back. So mm-hmm. they're not going to the season with just Cam Bray and freaking Cade yeah. Otten. Whether it's Rudolph, whether it's Ebron, it's going to be someone else. And I, I don't know. I just, even if Bray does, because I, I just did this article, be up on pff.com uh, tomorrow, we're looking at the workload tiers of all the tight ends. And it's tough to put Bray or any of these Tampa Bay tight ends like lower than the bottom tier because there's going to be a rotation of sorts. And the three wide receivers and running back are for sure going to be ahead of them. Maybe there's enough pass game volume in the overall offense, but it's not great. 
All right, so let's uh, let's look at um, what Ian did here. So that quarterback goes Mahomes, and then just to stick it to me goes Tua because of my name. I had um, I had Tyreek. I agree yeah, with your no. name before the show. <laughs> so we go we go with the with the Tua um, with the Tua Tyreek stack. Do we have any other stack there on that team? Uh, Mike Moore. Mike Osecki, and guess, then yeah Mike yep, Osecki, and I got yep. a Sky Moore with and then we Mahomes. go Mahomes, and then the Javante bring back um, Taylor at the one point oh one. You go with a, a two six seven three build. So actually, I want to talk to you about that. You go Taylor, Javante, AJ. For me, this is a five running back build. Talk about why you go six running back here. It came down to the last pick. It was Deontay Foreman or Carson Wentz, and I was okay. like, okay, I already have Mahomes, and I'll take a stab at you know what, what I think is again a mispriced uh, high upside player in Deontay Foreman. Cool. And then uh, when you start with with Smith and Gasecki, I think that's pretty clearly a three tight end team. Um, Hayden, any any thoughts on on Ian's team? Um, yeah, I think the debate is the sharp six, the six uh, running back. I, I think this team is is decent enough. I'm always on team. I think three tight ends. I think that's something that we're gonna learn. Uh, even when you have the unless you go like double like elite tight end, which is like definitely something I'm not gonna be doing. I still think that there's a, enough volatility. Even the top twelve performers on the season still have so much volatility week to week that I think in this format it's worth picking up those points. We like we mm. can project like Austin Hooper to be out there a lot. Like yep. some of the wide receivers we're picking this late is like, I mean, they can get cut. They can be the wide receiver four. Like LaVisca yep. Chanel was doing this. Freaking who was the um the undrafted guy on the Chiefs was like going like 170s oh my God. overall. What, what happened who, with that? Where did that come from? <laughs> Chat, show yourselves. Where did Just that come from? Ups for every yeah. time you drafted that guy, he's not even going to make the team. Um, And I mean, that – that makes me feel a little bit better that Hayden likes the three tight end build. Um, I started with a CMC, ended up with uh, uh, quite a few like bigger stacks than I usually go. Uh, Lamar with J.K. Dobbins just because J.K. was a crazy value. He fell 15 yeah. spots past his ADB with Bateman, brought it back with Claypool, got a mini with Devontae Smith and Chris Olave. Uh, Justin Fields paired him up with Cole Komet and brought that back with Jamal Williams. Daryl Henderson is a guy we already talked about. Uh, super late, small stack with, with McKinnon and uh, KJ Hammer. If I'm just kind of deciding on late round guys, I, I like them on good offenses, especially if they're good offenses that could that are going to be playing each other. Another mini stack with uh, T. Higgins and Jamison Crowder. And then, again, as I mentioned, I love the early round tight end just because that has – uh, early tight end has, except for last year, historically in best ball, even beyond underdog, has been a very dominant strategy. Last year it fell off, but it's something that I'm trying to do as much as possible. So uh, roast, T- me, roast me, roast me, roast me a little bit. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh-huh. curious on the the tight end, the historical tight end stuff, because I agree. I've ran the numbers as well. My theory and why I'm on three late round tight ends this year mm-hmm. in particular is. The elite tight ends, like George Kittle doesn't project as well because Debo Samuel's better. I think Trey Lance is going to add some volatility to that passing game. Sure. To me, Kyle Pitts has, like, just the environment's not as good. Darren Waller's add Devontae Adams. Uh, we'll see what Mark Andrews does and how the passing offense looks this year. And then Kelsey's so old. And even, like, George Kittle, Darren Waller, like, quietly, like, are, like, 30 years old. Um, I'm not sure if, like, the prime Gronk, prime Kelsey, prime Kittle years are going to be, like, necessarily reflective of what could happen like the next couple of years in best ball. So like, that's like the one position where I'm like a little concerned that the historical data might not carry over just because like we, and we got prime Gronk like during this historical yeah. best ball data. Yeah. We got prime Gronk, prime Gronk and we also have prime Kelsey. I mean, I I'm kind of looking at Kelsey Andrews Pitts. Um, I, I think if, any of their seasons break right it's kind of the same thing we've seen mm-hmm. over the reason that we've seen that work is because when those players do hit the the positional advantage is so massive and i think those players have that very much in their range of outcome kelsey for obvious reasons we know the range i think andrews for obvious reasons and then pitts i mean we just haven't seen a a talent like him um you know maybe ever at the position and and i think he's a type of player that can survive an environment like that because he can dominate so he can command so we know what he can do with yardage and target share but even if that offense doesn't produce a ton of pass touchdowns he could command such a high touchdown share as well that he can have the outlier like eight or nine touchdown season with 1400 yards or something like that and just blow away the tight end field so that's why i like the um I, I still like the other round tight end just because that the potential positional advantage is probably unmatched, except for maybe like you know Josh Allen going perfectly nuclear. And there's that spot where the running backs, you know, you still have another round to kind of get like one of 
ETN, Akers, maybe yeah. Zeke's your cup of tea or whoever. And like, you're just in the thick of the wide receiver two mess. So it's like, why not yeah. take Kyle Pitts uh, instead of really risking it there? I guess, TJ, like my only question, I think with your whole roster is like, why take Jonu instead of, I'm not sure where Duvernay went, but you could have gotten Byron Pringle or Vilas Jones. I guess maybe I'm answering my own question. Uh, r- 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 right Nikhil here, Harry. But- no, because yeah. I because I butchered it and went two tight ends uh, with a fourteen with a week fourteen. Oh, bye. I didn't yeah, see yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was that was the that was Sal tilting me and forcing me into that ah, ah. without without realizing what I was doing. That's right, usually then. that's usually no a two tight end team for me. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, uh, Hamler. I just it sounds like things are good, but then you hear about the hip Does dislocation, it? and then and it's like, <laughs> fuck he, me. I, that's got to be the most quiet, dislocated hip of all time. Like we, did, the fantasy community didn't realize he also dislocated his hip until like a year later. That's crazy. I, I thought I saw that he was looking all right, that he was on track. Um, we're hearing that too, but it's like, man, there's a hip in this to worry about as well. So I, and multiple ligaments in the, in the knee. It was like he, it was like a car crash. I, I have some exposure to him too, but again, since I've gotten these newer details, it's just like ah. Yeah, I mean, maybe I could, I could, I could. I have enough of him that I could cool off on him. But I mean, Denver really it was like uh, I, I had Denver KC with Jarek staring me in the face, and that was really the the what got me to that. He's sliding a little bit too. I think it's fine. We got another um, Yeah, before I get you guys out of here, everybody's hanging around waiting to see who won our four twenty five dollar tickets. The underdog usernames for those are J Riddle, FF Batman. A74 Wilson and Process76. Those Ooh. usually take a few days to get into your account. So um, if you don't get those, I believe, Sal, correct me if I'm wrong, email Sal. Not, not Not Hayden. Let me let me give me one sec. Let me make sure I get the right email to send you guys out. Um, oh, there we go. Uh, if you don't get those uh, in the next, let's say three days, four days, email salt four 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 dot com. But again, that is J Riddle, FF Batman, A seventy four Wilson, and Process seventy six. As always, thank you guys for bearing with me. Um, you will get Daigle's beautiful face back next week, and I'm sure I'll be back for at least a couple of more of these before the season kicks off. Um, Hayden, tell them what's going on with you and Underdog. Yeah, just going back, uh, I have that column about uh, the, the regular season prize if you want to be optimizing for that in any particular reason. Um, I've got a stream tomorrow talking about like week to week volatility and like correlation and how it kind of all plays into best ball. That's like really deep in the weeds. And if you just want the fantasy rankings, I got the fantasy rankings in the podcast too. follow me at the hidden wings. Ian, what's cracking over at PFF? What's in that? We're in the thick of it now. PFF fantasy football podcast. And you are right, TJ. That's why we took the last eight weeks cranking out team previews, podcast form, written form, all that. So if you feel like you need to catch up on the off season, feel free to go through those. And we have a very special guest uh, who happens to be to my top, right? Yeah, there we go. Mr. Hayden Winks coming on the PFF fantasy football podcast on Monday. Going to be talking all things, best ball strategy, me, him, Joy McFarlane, great day, it'd be great. And yeah, TJ, it's your second time this season. Come on, we can get the five. Hey, I, I got, I got nothing but time now. Um, as we mentioned earlier, if you guys haven't uh, checked out the SFB satellite, please check that out. It's for a great cause. Scott Fish has done a lot of great things for the community. If you haven't signed up for Underdog yet, click on the sign up link in the description. If you deposit ten dollars, you can get a free four for four subscription. Uh, as I mentioned, Daigle will be back next week. Look out for Daigle's team previews. He's going team by team, touching on every relevant fantasy player in the league. Uh, you know where to find me. I'm at TJ Hernandez, and everything. I'm doing is that four for four been heavy in these four formula one streets uh so we're still rocking that throughout the summer um but my focus is best ball at the end of this month it's moving on over to dfs usually uh dfs prices drop at the end of this month and sneak preview daigle's tag teaming with me for all things dfs this season at four for four so check that out hayden and ian appreciate you guys uh talk to you guys later